this is what I was asking. Uh, because I don't want to misrepresent Islam, I want to understand if I have the right idea or if I'm. Are you are you a Christian yourself? Or? I am a Christian. Yes. Yeah, this brother is a quite sincere man. That's very nice. Thank you. No, that's very good. No, no. Thank you for the question. I will answer the question. Sure. sure. Okay. Um, there's two premises that are important to get started, or to have uh, as base premises before we continue our discussion about inheritance in Islam. Okay. Premise one. The inheritance law in Islam is not um, ex the exclusive. It's not exclusively mentioned in the Quran. That's one. Premise two: that the inheritance nowhere in the Quran or the Sunnah has to be only one. It can be less than one and more than one. Less than one, I understand. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, what do you mean by that? Less than one yes. and more than one. Uh, okay. For example, in the Quran. In chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, the ones yes. that you are talking about. Yes. Where it starts, مِثْلُ حَظُّ الْأُنْثَيَينَ فَإِن كُنَّ نِسَاءً فَوْقَ اثْنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ ثُلُثَا مَا تَرَكْ وَإِن كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَا النِّصْفِ وَلِأَبْوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَ السُّدُسُ مِمَّا تَرَكَ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ وَلَدٍ فَإِن كَانَ لَهُمْ وَلَدٍ فَلَهُمَ الثُّلُثُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُ now, what is this verse talking about? It's, I'll tell you what it says. Let's take it step by step. If a man, all he has is three daughters. A person, a man has three daughters. Or let's say he has two daughters. How much will those daughters... Like he doesn't have any parents. His parents are dead. He doesn't have any sons. Okay, and all he has is daughters. So how much of the inheritance will they get? They will get two thirds, because it says what in, because in the Quran it says what in kunna what in kunna nisa and fawqat nataini falahunna thulutha ma tarak. If there were any women that were more than two, then two or more, two or more, then they have two thirds of what he has given. So in this situation. What happens to the rest of the inheritance? It's less than one. You see, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said you can leave a third of the rest of the inheritance maximum as a wasiyah. And he says, One third and a third is a lot, in fact. So in other words, there's situations in the Sharia ah where the inheritance can be less than one so for a situation where two or more daughters are left behind it's two-thirds of the inheritance and one-third we have to find out what to do with it then sure. okay sure. we can go to I charity don't, don't, if he has a wasiya I don't find that problematic not problematic at all sure, sure. now the same thing applies if the inheritance goes over one because the premise has never been that one is the, the total estate can only be can only represent the mathematical one in, in mathematics. The mathematical one in mathematics, nowhere in the Quran or in the Sunnah does it say that that is the barometer for all inheritance and that it has to fit a mathematical one. Had the Quran said that the, the, that the inheritance has to be consistent with the mathematical one, a whole, in, the, in mathematics, and then it had given, there had been scenarios whereby that, that was not possible, where it went under or over, then there would have been a contradiction in the Quran. But since the Quran doesn't make this... That's why I'm asking you. Yeah, the Quran never says it has to be over or under one. But could you explain to me how it can get over one? So, give me one second. So just to, just to, sorry, just to answer this question, on, on the question of, this has been us, because it's actually it's called Aul. Aul is a situation where we have, that we have two things, something called Al-Umariya, another called Minbariya. Literally, well, one of the uh, one of the uh, Rashidin al-Mahdiyin, the the Prophet's friends and family, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was asked about what happens when it goes over one. So he told us the, the situation. How how would we divide it? How would we divide it? Okay. So in the situation where you have two daughters, two or more daughters, let's say two, two daughters, one wife, two parents. Okay. So the two parents would get one sixth. 
So two one six plus one six equals one third. Okay. The the wife the wife would get one eighth, and the 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 two daughters would get two thirds, which me which means it's one and one eighth. Okay. So what happens is, I don't have a board here, but the original denominator would be twenty four. So you have a denominator. The lowest common multiple is twenty four. The lowest common multiple of what? The lowest common multiple of those fractions is 24. So, so let me tell you what I mean by that. So what does one third, one eighth, one uh, and yeah, 24 is, is, is the lowest common multiple. Now, if we have one and one eighth, the lowest common multiple tra uh, it changes to, one, uh, to 27, to 27. Because where, whereas, all of one third and one eighth and one sixth can go into 24. Yes. When we're talking about now, you have an, uh, you have one and one eighth as the as the total sum, which means the de denominator has to be out of 24, which we, uh, 27, which means it becomes an improper fraction, comes over one percent. So whereas before the parents one, one, no not one and one eighth it becomes uh, nine over eight. Yes, exactly. It's nine over eight. So, so the denominator is not twenty-seven. No, but if, if you if you want to represent nine over eight, which is an improper fraction, yes. in a way which has a denominator which can fit all of the fractions in it, the denominator becomes twenty-seven. Okay, at this mathematics, and this doesn't sound right. No, no, no. It's it's right. Trust me. No, no. So let's let's stick with nine over eight. Okay. Nine over eight is uh, is an improper fraction because the numerator is more than the denominator. Okay. If the numerator is more than the denominator, it's an improper fraction. It's one and one eighth, no problem. So now we have to go back to our cake, because if you think of the estate as a cake or let's say an apple, then what necessarily happens is everyone now gets a smaller portion of the cake. So do you call then the whole thing one and one eighth? Yes. So one and one and one and one eighth, or nine over eight, or uh, denominator twenty-seven becomes the new one. Okay, okay. So one transfers to one nine over eight. So which means that becomes. A, so now, okay. instead of the parents getting one over one uh, or uh, one sixth each, they'll get less than that. Okay. Instead of the wife getting one eighth, she'll get less than that, and so on and so forth. Okay. So everyone's share decreases. Just like if, for example, it went under one one, everyone's share would increase. I, um, so I understand now. now yeah. I understand. So, yeah. So, so if the so, yeah. So, so when when I read it as someone who doesn't understand the Quran, uh, it seems that something doesn't add up. Yes. Uh, and of course, mathematics is something that can be objective. So I was wondering um, how Muslims how would you do that? Would, would yes. Deal with that. And thank you for explaining that to me. Any sign? Now I understand how it works. So. That's fine. No, that's fine. So the point is this, is that the premise is never that if one was the, uh, the barometer of all um, mathematical consistency that we have, it can go over one, it can go under one. So that's, but in most cases, and this is the reality, that it will fit in one. In most cases, I would say over 95% of cases. These are anomalous cases that we've talked about where it goes under or over one, because usually people have, let's say sons. If they, don't, if they have sons, it's usually an easy equation because the son gets half, etc., whatever. Get the son away. Now you have um, the wife. The, the and by the way, this is really interesting. Let me tell you why. One of the common attacks against Islam is that the inheritance law for a man is more than it is for a woman. Well, I know, it, but it's not really true because in some cases, like for example, we just talked about a situation where the man and the woman get the same because the, the father and the mother get one thirty, uh, one sixth each. One third each if there's no son, and one sixth each if there is a son. So let's say one sixth each. And in the situation, the, the biggest proportionality of any inheritance given to any subgroup is that which is given to two or more females, which is more than that which is given to sons, by the way. So when, because there's no verse in the Quran which says that if, uh, if two or more sons, etc., then they have two thirds. But it says, if I remember well, but then, says, yeah, the, 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 the son gets, like, yes, so, half. So, so yes, if, yes. If he has, for example, uh, yes. two sisters. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 the right thing to say 
be that the son gets the most out of the inheritance, of all, uh, all inheritors, not that men get more than women. Because in some cases, men get, more, uh, women, men get more than women, in some cases, women get more than men, and in other cases, they get the same. Yeah, but that's that's it. Really. Okay, so it kind of balances. Yes, yeah. Sure. Okay, does, yeah, that, yeah. does that help it? Yeah, yeah, it does help. Yeah, Thank you, man. Uh, Thank you, Mohammed. Mohammed. Nice, to, nice meet you, man. to meet you, man. You too, man. All the best, eh? yeah, anytime, man. Okay. Anytime. Thank you. Last week. Hi, are you well? Yeah, all right. That's the problem. It's a kalari. 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 It's